hi, welcome to Friday afternoon. This is take two of a um, Instagram live that I recorded earlier on in the week with my hairdresser, um, Matt Curtis. And for some reason it just got us a rid of um, Instagram. We became disconnected and we could only uh, record the last few minutes. So for popular requests, I'm doing it again in between my consultations um, at home. So for many of you who know um, me, I'm a GP and menopause specialist and I'm really interested in the whole health benefits of really getting a proper menopause and looking after ourselves properly. And um, I thought I would do this one with Matt because I was booked in to have my hair cut with him on Tuesday and was gutted that it had to be cancelled. Um, and so I thought it would be a bit of fun, but also it's really important because Hair is so important to us women and it can really make our confidence, um, improve our confidence if our hair is looking good and feeling good. Yet a lot of women during the perimenopause and menopause find that their um, hormones really can affect their hair growth and their hair texture. Um, so I'm going to get Matt on and we'll do a question and answer. I'm keeping my glasses on because um, I'm getting older and I'm long sighted so I can't read many of the messages so I'm going to have a look. Um, Sarah Ball, one of the doctors who works really closely with me, is going to answer some questions as well so look out for Sarah Molly Ball um, coming up and she will be answering some of the questions so thanks Sarah. So let me see if I can connect with Matt and um, let's see what happens. So we're just waiting for him to connect and then we can start picking his brains and trying to um, find out. Hi Matt, how are you doing? Hey, how are you doing Louise? You okay? Yeah, good, thank you. So I was just saying, you probably were listening, that we're going to, I'm just going to position my camera, that we're, we're just going to try and do take two and hopefully we won't get flicked out of Instagram. We're hoping this is a slight quieter time. I think in the evening <laughs> it was a bit busy. So um so as I was saying, um, Matt is my hairdresser and I couldn't see him on Tuesday because of lockdown. So um, my hair is suffering, but a lot of women's hair is suffering. So um, for some of you who may have listened to this, this is going to be a repeat. I can't remember everything that we talked about, but we'll just go through and see. So, so Matt, before we start talking about hair, just talk a bit about you and what you do um, and where you work, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. So uh, essentially, I'm based in the, in the UK, a multi-salon uh, chain owner. So we've got salon in the Rosewood Hotel in London, which is London's five-star hotel. We've got one in Chipping Camden, Chipping um, uh, Stratford-upon-Avon, and also uh, Hallcross Hall in Staffordshire. Uh, I'm predominantly based out as uh, Stratford-upon-Avon, uh, and also fly around the world and do loads of uh, interesting things like red carpet, a celebrity hair um i'm a kind of um a frequent sort of veteran of uh, leading shows in new york fashion week and paris fashion week and london fashion week and so on and so on um but don't be put off by that we look after you know uh, as clients would say us, us regular folk we're, we're not they're all people they've all got the same problems and issues and you know we like to be there to help and advise where we can yeah, and certainly um, I started coming to you because my mother-in-law, who, who lives in Stratford-upon-Avon, has been to see you for a while, and she um, it told me about you, and I've been to see you, and now a lot of my friends and colleagues are coming to see you as well, which is great. You, um, you'll need to come and see me for that fringe as well soon, eh? It's oh, getting no, on. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm not going to do as my nine-year-old daughter did earlier yeah. in the week, cutting her own fringe. I think I'm just going to leave it yeah. to go along, actually. <laughs> so... Before we start talking about tips in this sort of lockdown um, period, I just wanted to sort of talk a bit about hair and maybe you could just tell us a bit about what hair is because a, a lot of us just feel it's something that's pumped on our head, um, but there's a lot more to it, isn't it? So why does hair grow and what are the hair follicles and just tell us about um, what helps our hair to grow and, and a bit about hair in general, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. So um, hair grows out of a follicle on the scalp um, and you can encourage more growth. Um, you can speed up uh, resting stages of hair that's um, uh, kind of in a dormant stage um, because generally we, uh, the average lifespan of a hair is around about three years. So when that hair comes out and you'll notice that every, I mean, every three years, but 
you'll find that women will come into the salon and say, oh my God, I'm losing loads of hair in the shower. And, and generally a lot of that is down to natural shed. Um, and it, it isn't about a deficiency. You're not suffering with hair loss. Um, it's just a natural process. And when that hair comes out and naturally sheds, it goes into a dormant stage, a resting stage called the anagen stage. Um, and then around about three to six months later, it'll start to grow through again. Um, and that can be a big panic in time for people. Um, and it isn't a time to panic. It's time to observe and, and wonder whether there's any other um, contributing factors that is causing hair loss, like whether it's through the perimenopausal stage or further stages, um, whether it's a deficiency in diet, um, whether you've had a trauma, um, Maybe previously, um, uh, traumatic loss of hair or traumatic shedding, uh, shock loss, uh, people call it as well, um, can happen three to six months down the line. So there's a big gap in between yeah. when you'll see um, a difference in your hair. So you, there's loads of different factors to think about. And I think talking to the stylist and not worrying about it and being open as well about whatever time of life it is for you, whether it's a male stylist or whether it's a female stylist, it shouldn't be a taboo subject. Mm -hmm. um, and we're there to help. We've got loads of knowledge and you know, it, it could be as simple as look, you, you look, you can tell some people who are um, health conscious, but maybe too far and they don't eat as much and they're weight conscious and you can you can generally sense that they might be suffering from some form of deficiency um through not eating so it could be as simple as a lack of iron that is causing hair thinning um there's loads of contributing factors and it's very important like you say because our hair the stages of hair growth if we are experiencing hair loss is to think back sort of for three months in general isn't it what happened mm -hmm. in our life then so stress can be very common contributing cause of, of hair loss um, and but it's often a stress that's happened in the past as opposed to what's happening now um, um, and it's not just what we put on our hair which we'll talk about in a bit but it's about within as well um, and so certainly for me as a menopause specialist all I do is think and talk about the menopause so we better start talking a bit about that and then we'll talk about some deficiencies that can lead to hair loss so a lot of women find that their hair consistency, texture, thickness, density changes during the perimenopause and menopause. And as a lot of you who are listening know, the perimenopause is the time before periods stop. But when periods start to change, either in nature or frequency, and so and people experience menopausal symptoms such as flushes, sweats, but also symptoms such as fatigue, muscle pains, joint pains, headaches, um, uh, uh, brain fog, memory problems. So it can come on very gradually. So often people don't actually realize it's related to their hormones. But a lot of people find the texture of their skin changes because estrogen is very important for the collagen, the building protein in our skin. So skin become, can become dry, can become itchy, just look different. Um, and then the hair can often change, become more dry, often brittle and hair loss and around 40%. And um, so nearly half of women who go through the menopause do experience hair loss. Um, and it might be the first sign that your hormones are changing, um, that you're having some hair changes. So, and so many women tell me it's their hairdresser that notices their hair, especially if you're fortunate to have a hairdresser that you can see regularly they tend to remember what your hair's like. And, mm -hmm. and so I don't know whether that's your experience, Matt, whether you notice people's hair changing in texture and quality during that time. Certainly, certainly. There's, um, uh, I mean, dealing with people, when someone leaves the door and, and then they come back six weeks later, it generally doesn't feel like six weeks. You know, you think, oh, he was only in yesterday. So, uh, you know, we've got great relationships with clients and that's important to have. And knowing all of the ins and outs of people's lives, the things that hairdressers talk about with their clients, it's um, what you when you do see something that's abnormal, it, it is something that, you know, it's, it's our professional integrity really to say, look, you know, what, what's happening? Are you not eating properly? Are you, you know, and have conversations because it might be something greater. Mm, which is really important. And I think if, if a lot of women don't realize the importance of hormones 
on our hair, which it seems mad, doesn't it? Hormones that regulate our periods, why would they get into our hair? Well, the hormones, estrogen and also testosterone in women get in cells all over our body, but especially, um, you know, less commonly thought of places like our eyes and our ears and our, um, our hair as well. So um, when we think about just, just briefly to educate some of the people that are listening, really, because I can see there's some questions about estrogen and HRT coming through. Um, there are very, um, there are so many different types and doses of HRT and, and I have done some Instagram lives that are available to see still on my Menopause Doctor website and through my Instagram. Um, and I do talk about different doses and types of HRT, but generally as a rule of thumb, estrogen helps to improve hair growth, um, hair quality, hair texture as well. And the best way of having estrogen is through the skin because it goes straight into the skin, through the, through the skin, into the bloodstream, no risk of clot, and um, it, it makes a big difference. Um, they, it, it, this is used either as a gel or a patch, or there's a spray now that's come out that goes again through the skin. And then women who still have their womb need a progesterone um, to protect the lining of the womb from estrogen, and there are different types. And there are synthetic, um, so man-made, well, they're all man-made, but, but synthetics are not the same structure as our own hormones. Um, that are traditionally in combination tablets and these can be negative for hair so if women have hair loss then they probably shouldn't be taking these these hormones they should change to a body identical type of progesterone if their hair is fine and they're taking that hrt without problems that's fine but it's certainly the, the first thing that we would do and, and look at um, some people have asked about the marina coil um, which is a synthetic progestogen, but it's very, very low dose because it just works in the, in, in the lining of the womb. Most people find that doesn't have a negative effect on their hair, but some people are very sensitive, so it still can. Um, and then some people have been asking about testosterone, which um, is a separate <coughs> conversation, but we produce more testosterone than estrogen before the menopause as women. So a lot of women have testosterone as part of their HRT. And a lot of people think that would worsen hair loss, but actually a lot of women find it makes their hair um, stronger, better, better quality, and even can grow better because there is some evidence that the testosterone improves the hair follicles and the, the way that the hair grows. Um, as long as it's taken in a proper way and the dose is monitored and the blood tests are monitored as well. So um, it's getting a balance of hormones is really important. And that's why it's so key that people see a doctor who really specializes in the menopause because we're all different. So we often need different hormones. So that's just a very brief overview. There's more details elsewhere on my website. Um, so we, you mentioned briefly about iron mat. So, so what we eat, we all know it's really important for our skin and our bodies and our well-being and our mental state. But eating is important for our hair too, isn't it? Oh, my God, yeah. So um, deficiency in certain things that you uh, get, whether it be iron or uh, B12 or vitamin C, um, which is just great for everything, um, Oh, I think your signal's just gone. So let me just keep. Oh, are you still there? Yeah, yeah still here. Still here. Sorry, this is a close okay. one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, uh, I mean, it's one of the first things that will um, kind of get people to go and check, really. And we, we look at all the other things before we suggest that there's further um, kind of issues going on. Mm -hmm. So it, it is if, if you came in and you had thinning hair, it's, it's, it's like ticking it off the list. And, the, and one of the difficult parts is if someone was deficient in iron, for example, it does take a little bit of time for, for that to, if they start taking supplements advised mm -hmm. by their GP or whoever they've saw, for it um and it it will take a little bit of time to see the results so you do have to trust the process and bear with it um it, it it's not always a the best way to go and throw everything at it straight away yeah. you know and panic yeah and i think that can be very confusing for people because there's so many supplements out there that are available mm -hmm. for hair loss and hair growth and a lot of them are very expensive um Certainly iron is something that in the clinic we would check and a lot of women, although periods can become less frequent and lighter, there are a significant number of women who have heavier periods and if you're having 
having periods, then you're more likely to lose um, iron. Um, so we often do a blood test called ferritin, which looks at iron level. Um, mm. And it, the normal range is actually quite big. It lasts, it depends on the laboratory, but it's between about 30 to 300. So some people say, well, my level's normal, but when I look at the number, it's only 32, 33 or 40. And most um, hair specialists like it above 75. And there's a lot of people that have um, inadequate iron in their diet. I, I mean, I, for example, don't eat meat. Um, and it's very common now that people don't eat meat or fish. And so you have to look at your, your iron intake. It's really important. Or take an iron supplement. And if your level's low, you should be advised by your doctor by having a good quality iron supplement. And you have to take it for three months before you'll, you'll replete those stores and notice something, um, some changes in your hair. Um, someone's been asking about vitamin D. We should all be taking vitamin D. So Matt, you should be taking it if you're not. Everyone should be taking it because it's the sunlight vitamin. You're very lucky today, it's a sunny day, mm -hmm. but you need to have sunshine all year if you're going to have enough vitamin D. So vitamin D supplementation is very good. It can be good for our hair, but it's also an anti-inflammatory good for immunity as well and actually times of covid we want any any way of boosting our immunity has got to be good um so yes we should all be taking vitamin d think about iron zinc is something that came up with quite a few questions today i don't know what you think about zinc matt um i mean to be honest if zinc's fantastic oh, well, i mean uh, i i take a, a great multivitamin and uh, i'm i'm all for zinc Oh, your sound's going. Oh, hello. Can you hear me? That's it. I can hear you now. Yeah. yeah. So all the things that I think I'm not getting enough of. So, again, like you, I'm not someone that eats meat. So, um, yeah. the, I do try and take a great multivitamin. Um, the, the, the one question that we, um, that we hear regularly from clients, and, and uh, I believe I know the answer to this, but um, I, I feel like it'd be good for everyone that's listening to, to hear. Um, when we um, talk about hair loss with clients, sometimes people will just rush out and get an iron supplement, but that can have negative side effects if you, uh, with some people, can't it? So if you are having yeah. too much, too much iron, it can actually be bad for you. Is that correct? Yeah, you have to just be careful what supplement you take. Um, there are ones that you can buy and then there are ones that you can prescribe. And the ones that you can buy are, are usually a very low dose and they're often not quite high enough. Um, there is something called Active Iron, which you can get online. I think they even sell it through Amazon, which has better absorption. Um, a lot of people find they get um, constipation or abdominal upset mm -hmm. from taking iron. So if you have the iron... Um, something like active iron people get less side effects so if, you, if there's one that doesn't suit you it's worth worth exploring um there's another supplement called biotin that someone's been asking um mm -hmm. which some people find beneficial um and again not not everyone does so i think the most important thing is to look at the most obvious causes that are that are cheap and easy to reverse like like you say so so diet um hormones if, if possible vitamin d because we should all be on it and then only looking at the sort of other supplements if there's a real obvious reason why they should be low um, mm -hmm. because otherwise people can spend a fortune can't they on on supplements oh my god there's there's so many things out there and again it, it is about seeking some professional advice and you'd probably end up saving more money by speaking to a specialist or someone with some knowledge um and it's the worst thing with knowledge knowledge generally everyone's always you know willing to offer their knowledge but it's getting the right knowledge um yeah, so absolutely and I, I totally agree and i think a combination of of hairdressers and also as a specialist in hair loss and sometimes that can be a trichologist or often it's mm -hmm. a dermatologist who's a doctor who specializes in hair loss and uh, if you want to have more information like this there's a podcast I've done with one of my colleagues Dr Sajad Rupa who's a specialist dermatologist and he gives some great advice so um, you can access the podcast through my website Menopause Doctor or you can just search Muse and Health on the podcast app and you'll find it there so um hopefully that gives you a bit of insight about internal reasons but so let's think about externally um 
there's a lot of people who, despite taking HRT, still have hair loss. And a lot of women I see in my clinic have hair loss, and it's a familial pattern. There's a, a female pattern hair loss. And often if you talk to them, their mother or their, their auntie's had it. Um, the other thing we haven't mentioned is, is thyroid. Um, so a lot of people, it's worth checking if you're under active thyroid gland. Um, so when people still have hair loss, and it's not related to anything, and endogenous so it's not related to our hormones as, as you know the people are taking the supplements are there clever ways that we can work with our hairdressers to improve our hair well talk us through things like extensions or yeah um, the, do you know what the, or... there are some some great ways i mean there's there's plenty of things out there um it's getting a good quality hair a good quality um uh, application as well so it doesn't put too much strain on the on the hair or, or on the scalp um because you don't want to enhance the problem and there's there's the i would say generally there's uh, three sort of processes that are within a salon um so the first one being um bonds so right. oh, you're still there you're, you're yeah, all blurry yeah. There, yeah so the first one being individual bonds um which are um applied with a keratin bond to the hair um these are great for length for thickness um sometimes body as well and they create longevity of style um these though however on fine hair can cause some damage on particularly fine hair because it what it does is the small little group of hairs that you've attached a bond to um if they're pull you know constant brushing tying up or the styling that people do um can put pressure on uh, put tension on these and and create breakage and also you get natural shed of hair which we spoke about earlier where people you know you might get um it might be a time where your hair sheds and then all of a sudden the hair that's been bonded in um comes away and it's only held on by fewer hairs so then that can easily break and come away um there are also um tapes which are great for spreading the tension um because they've got a wider surface area um they they are limited with styling so if uh, as it's a long thick tape if you then wanted to put all your hair up it might not be going the way that you want it to go because it's a tape. Uh, they are yeah. great if you wear your hair down and you want to create thickness. Someone like you, Louise, if if um, if you had fine hair, they look great in bobs for creating thickness around the front, generally oh, yeah. through this yeah. area of recession, which is more commonly uh, more common for women to uh, to get at uh, later stages. Or um, so it creates thickness around this recession area. Um, which is fantastic um, uh, but again it's one of those it does limit you on your styling options um, and the third option is fantastic it's a, a hair system and this can be bonded to uh, your hair so your natural hair is pulled through and then bonded on so uh, and then it's just kept tight on regular um, uh, kind of uh, maintenance sessions and then this uh, it does take longer to get those pieces they're often designed so that they fit your head shape um, and price wise they are more expensive but the longevity of them um, once you've had them they're they're absolutely fantastic they're, they're amazing um, but they can price wise go up to depending on where you are in the country from up to 3000 in london up to about 1500 in in the midlands and the north of the country um, so they are quite eye watering for some people but it, it, it's, but I've had some patients who have spent a lot more than that going to different specialists, often in London, and having mm -hmm. all sorts of weird potions to put on their scalps haven't helped at all. And then they've had one of these systems, and it's transformed them. It really has, um, because confidence is so important, isn't it, for hair? So it's important to do your homework and explore. Mm -hmm. And I know there's also this spray, isn't there, that's got this sort of fine fibres, or, or you put it into yeah, your scalp the, so just for some some thinning isn't there if your parting is becoming wider or what, what yeah there's a there's a few different brands out there the one that i particularly use at the moment i uploaded um a video of the brand and i might i might have another video that i did years ago with with them uh, that i can upload today um and it's the nanogen hair fibers. Um, the similar brands that people might recognize are topic fibers as well. They're, they're very similar. Um, 
And what it is, is it's tiny little keratin fibers that you can sprinkle down your scalp, uh, sprinkle on the scalp, and it creates a thicker, fuller, more denser look. So they come in, a, you know, varying colors. So you can intermix them if you've got, you know, salt and pepper or wh whatever kind of color hair you've got. Um, but they are great for uh, creating thickness. And also what we found people use is the um, L'Oreal color sprays. So um, when we did this the other day, I said Eva Longoria, she, she'd done um, a color uh, spray. Obviously, she's got gray roots at the moment. And she's used the L'Oreal spray to spray it down a, a root area to, to cover in the gray. Um, what it also does is it, because it, it sits on the scalp um, as well to create um, a darker feel. So, you know, the light doesn't beam and reflect off your scalp, making you feel like you've got a denser uh, look. So there are loads of little tricks and, and tips that you can do. And and again, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm fairly active on Instagram. If anyone does have any specific problems, and I had some the other day message me, if anyone has any problems, just, just reach out. It's, uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to help. Yeah, no, that's great, Matt. So let's talk a bit about lockdown. We're all here not being able to come and see our hairdressers, mm. um, wondering whether we should be dyeing our hair. And um, like I said the other day, my children are intrigued to know what I'm like with grey hair. I don't think my hair would go completely grey, but I am conscious of my roots starting to show. And it's very tempting to uh, uh, order some shampoo, some, um, uh, colour to, to put on my hair, but I know you're wow. mad, so I'm not going to do it. But, um, you know, people have asked what, you know, the, the spray is a great tip for, for roots. Is, is, should we be dyeing our hair? Is there any, any sort of semi-permanent or, or anything that we could do? Especially people who have been messaging me with grey hairs, especially people who have their hair dyed dark and mm -hmm. they're grey. It's a real problem, isn't it? So is yeah. there, would you recommend anything for us at all? I, I wouldn't recommend dyeing your hair, especially if you're, um, you've got commitments to go back to work in the, in, hopefully in the next three, three weeks, um, purely because it's really hard to color match your color to looking at a box. It's a bit like going into B&Q, for example, and looking for a, a, um, a tin of paint and thinking, that looks a great color. And you go home, you put it on the wall, and you think, Jesus Christ, it looks awful. You know, yeah. so it's, it's very similar. So you can end up having two-tone hair. Um, another common mistake that people make is they don't skin test themselves against the color to see if they're allergic to it. Yeah. So you can have some terrible terrible accidents unfortunately um, reactions to color um, there are different products in home box uh, dye kits than what are in uh, than what we use in the salon and we always make sure we do proper testing to check that we're not going to create any reaction on you so it's a really key thing to remember when you're doing it as certainly as well when <clears throat> excuse me when hormones start to change you might you may have been dying your hair all your life but when hormones start to change your body can react differently to chemicals so it i would advise against it and getting a root touch up spray and waiting for your stylist and and letting us you know f fix these roots and have greater pleasure of being back at work yes so maybe we should just be wearing our hats <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and then what about shampoos because um i'm always confused about shampoos my um my teenage children have about five or six different shampoos on the go all the time and I'm very traditional and I tend to buy a more expensive shampoo that's full coloured hair but I use very small amounts so mm -hmm. I think I spend less on my shampoo than my children do. Um, talk us through, is it all marketing or are there shampoos that we should be looking at? So most, most shampoos are colour safe. Um, the Color, the ones that are specifically targeted to, um, you know, color reflection or blondes, for example, are generally um, there to add a, um, a kind of a, a molecule which helps reflect and make your color look like it's got more of a sheen. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, most shampoos are color safe. Um, the blonde ones may, may I mean, uh, because they have to look at it from a mass consumer project you you look at it and think well if you've got blonde hair the chances are that you've um over processed your hair or you've processed it with some kind of pre-lightener or, or bleach mm. um so you're going to need more moisture so 
it, there is a big difference in, in what goes into salon shampoos and consumer shampoos. So if you do regularly see your stylist, then ask them about shampoos because we can recommend consumer stuff. We don't obviously like to because we like to drive retail as well, <laughs> which is a real, you know, which is a truth. But um, we can also say we do know that this is a great shampoo. Mm -hmm. Certainly for hair loss, there's great shampoos. And I know some of you will be tuning in because of the hair thinning. So if I just touch quickly on yeah, some yeah. of the, the, yeah. the ranges of hair thinning shampoos. So salon shampoos um, for the, there's a new one released by Kerastas at the moment called the Genesis range. And it's great. It comes with a scalp tonic. And um, as we was talking earlier about the makeup of hair and why it grows and how it grows, um, the hair grows out of a follicle and there's on average three to five hairs out of that follicle. And it might be good to, it's always good to treat your hair that's grown, but that hair has already grown out. It's at its, but you know, it's reached its potential um, and it's good to look after it. But if you can extend that well-being to your scalp to help promote healthy hair growth, then you'll noticeably see a difference. You can use scalp tonics um, and serums to rub onto the scalp daily, um, which will help break down some of the chemicals uh, get into the hair follicle that harden and restrict growth. Now, Kerastas have brought out a range called Genesis, um, which is fantastic. It helps um, promote and uh, healthy hair growth, soften any of this DHT that's in the scalp so that you can maintain those three to five average hairs that grow out rather than it restricting and, and those numbers obviously um, depleting. Um, and then there's also consumer ranges, um, Nanogen as well, the uh, brand that I spoke about, which have uh, the fibers. They've got a great shampoo range, uh, shampoo and conditioning range as well, uh, which is weightless and you know helps promote volume. Um, and also Nioxin as well. Nioxin's got a great 3D um, kind of whole kit that you can buy. Um, so they're fantastic. Um, but again, just quickly diving into the scalp uh, and extending the well-being to your scalp. It's really important. And we do try and educate all kinds of well, everyone that comes in to just try and think about it. You know, you do it with your face, with your BB creams and your all sorts, you know, all kind of skincare and whatever you're doing. Um, so do try and uh, extend that to the scalp and, and ask your stylist. Which is so important because we often just think about quick shampoo, maybe a conditioner, and then that's it. But actually, the scalp is so important, and there are various treatments and oils that um, can make a difference to our scalps, aren't there? Um, mm. And I know last time we talked about um, hair brushes as well. Um, yes. Because um, there's so many different hair brushes, aren't there? And I'm always transfixed when I come and see you and you've got so many different ones and yes. um, you know and it all depends on hair length hair style what you're doing whether you're brushing it when it's wet or should we be combing it when it's wet I don't know I mean all these these questions just seem really trivial but actually they're quite important so can you just talk us through hair brushing? yeah sure so um when you're in the shower, um, uh, if we start it there, we, I mean, in, in our shower at home, we've always got a big white tooth comb that we comb through our hair. It, it obviously creates less tension um, and combing it through while it's with the, when you've got a conditioner on um, is great for untangling so that you have to do less uh, kind of vigorous and rigorous brushing when you've got out of the shower, creating split ends and damage and, and also pulling on there. Um, and then a white tooth comb once you're out of the shower as well is, is brilliant. Um, try and avoid the tiny teeth. Um, uh, only use those for fringes. There's no real reason that you'll need those um, at all. It's just going to create tension on the scalp. Um, and then brush wise, um, if you've got long, fine, thin hair, you can either use a paddle brush, uh, which is a mm -hmm. flat brush with prongs that are quite far apart or bristles yeah. that are far apart. Um, which helps again to reduce tension. Um, and uh, brush brands that I love um, are T3. Um, you can find the website T3 Micro, uh, I believe is their website. And they've got some great round brushes and a paddle brush on there as well, which we use here at home. Uh, and in the salon, it's great. Um, and they've got really soft bristles as well, so it doesn't pull on the hair too much. Um, and obviously a great brush a mason and pearson brush which is at the top end of the price 
bracket, but, but we'll last forever. oh god, yeah. No, you know, I've got one my nan gave to me years ago that we, we it's like a little relic, <laughs> it feels like an heirloom, you know. Um, but they do last forever, and there are different brush, uh, ball brushes, uh, sorry, different um bristles, and it's mm -hmm. it's good to read on the website, even though the website is quite dated. Um, it, I think it serves a brand. It, I quite like it um, because it's it is an old fashioned brand that's just yeah, that's timeless yeah. and great. But um, do read on there because there are different br uh, bristles for different hair types, whether you've got thick hair, fine hair, or um, a medium density. So it goes from full nylon bristles to bore bristle mixed with nylon or full bore bristle, and they all do different things. So do read on the website. It's it's fascinating read um, for, for, for a hair geek. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, and also uh, more... Um, uh, the two brush ranges that are recommended can be quite expensive. Um, so there is one called Olivia Garden. Um, mm -hmm. They do a whole range of brushes and also emulate what the Mason and Pearson do as well. And they've got their own different br uh, bristles from ball brush and et cetera. But they are, they are a bit more consumer friendly to the, to, to the personal wallet. So lots of, lots of choice and it's, it's, it's important, isn't it? Because it does make such a difference. And I know towards the end of the, uh, the Instagram Live we did last time, we did touch on straighteners and hairbrushes. And one of the things that resonated with me was you were saying, look and see how old your hair dryer is. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was thinking about my mother's hair dryer, which must be about 20 years old. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> um, because you were saying if it heats too much, that can damage the hair. Yeah, dryer, so, so it, it's not it's not good for your colour. It's it's not good for um, the moisture of your hair and, and keeping it healthy and shiny. And, and I mean, it, it is one of the most common things when someone comes into the hair salon with a problem of dryness or breakage or sometimes even scorching of the hair where you get these it almost looks like it's been singed and the first thing that they do is go i'm burning it with my straighteners i'm burning it with my tongs and and you know you, we swap all those things out and and then we give them shampoos conditioners the treatments everything to to help smooth it out the blow dry creams the heat protectors and again they've spent loads of money and but it's not about getting them to spend loads of money it's about finding the right thing so one of the first thing that we always ask is how old's your hair dryer and i know your mother-in-law but i do her hair obviously and and now i can't wait to give her a grill in when she comes in oh, <laughs> um but no it, it is something that if it does get too hot and you're spending all that money on color and protecting your hair and looking after it then you're only just going to do yourself a disservice and you're going to see that color fade quicker the condition uh, get worse and you're just going to be yeah. fighting this ever increasing yeah. circle of damage uh, it's, and it's it's so important i mean i think everything that we do you want you want to have long lasting effects mm -hmm. you know we don't want this quick and i think with um covid and the way with lockdown we're all reflecting and thinking about how to maximize our productivity how to improve our life and our well-being and our health and and that certainly doesn't stop at hair so i hope that some of you who are listening have found this useful that we've gone from within the body all the way out if you like um and you know ending with the hair straighteners and uh, and and hair dryers because it's it's not just one thing hair loss um, or hair changes isn't just a single quick answer and it's very important to know it's not quick so i know some of you have been commenting since we started talking about hrt that you have to persevere and it can take several months and as matt said at the beginning as well any dietary changes We've got to be persistent with as well but seek help get advice and, um, and matt it's been really great for you giving up your time to share your knowledge so thank you very much it's always um, lovely it would be really useful if you could maybe on your instagram post tomorrow just mention some of the um companies and, and links that you talked about today because i think oh, well. people have been asking so fantastic great so we'll all be having transformed hair in the future so brilliant thanks ever so much Matt. no it's worries really it's a pleasure thank you all and don't be afraid to reach out thank you yeah, definitely take care thank See you, you. Later. bye bye, bye.